Welcome back to Beelzebub the Jag. Um, I've tidied this weld up just a little bit. I've just sort of filed it slightly. It's worked quite well. Um, it's going to need a bit more filing. Um, I'm not 100% happy with it. You know, I, I want it to be completely flush, completely perfect. But overall, you know, it's a decent repair. It just needs a bit more dressing. I'll come back to that. I'm not going to dress it perfectly until I've trial fitted it. I want to make sure it fits the car before I dress the metal up perfectly. I don't want to dress it all perfectly and then realise I've got to cut it and do it again. What I've been doing tonight is um, the, uh, this is the, the top end, this is the edge of the bonnet that closes against the windscreen. If you saw the films last night you'd have seen that it was completely rotten in here and I was struggling trying to make, let's just turn the uh, camera around slightly, I was struggling trying to make a repair section with the correct sort of profile in it. Um, I've done a lot of bashing and crashing about and to be honest it's the, um, this edge they're spot welded together and I don't have a spot welder which is a bit of a nuisance and there's a spot weld in here which I haven't been able to get out it's oh, goodness me um, I've been able to break the others but this one it's just but it's too tight to get a grinder in there I don't want to end up grinding part of the bonnet away you can't get the snips in so um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave it in, I'm going to sort of file it smooth and I'm going to trim a section out on here and um, I'll just leave that in. Um, it's, it's well and truly spot welded. So um, this is going to sort of fit in here somehow. It, it's, it's going to take a lot of fiddling but um, you get the idea. It's, um, you know, that will, that will butt weld there. And um, I'll have to sort of tidy all this up. It's a bit rough, but um, I can't find my hand weight. If I can find my hand weight, I'll be able to tidy these bumps and bashes up a bit. And obviously, I've got to, I've got to trim this down considerably. But um, um, it's starting to get late now, and I can't really be banging in the street anymore. It's just not fair on the neighbours. But um, I've got a rough sort of a rough shape. Um, so this, this swage will continue into there. And then that swage actually finishes. It finishes just like this here. Um, so it finishes about about eight to nine millimeters in front of the weld. So um, yeah, I'll, I'll weld that across here and grind the weld flat, and then the swage will finish. But um, yeah, this swage has actually got to it's got to join. So yeah, still a lot more fiddling. I found a couple of little holes here. I'll, I'll grind those. I'll, 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 I'll weld those up. And then there was quite a bit rot here. So um, what I'm going to do, I'll, um, there was a spot weld here, which is that fed underneath and was spot welded. So I'm going to drill, drill off a sort of four or five millimeter hole and the, the repair section will, it will go in here. If I can, let me get another piece of metal. I should possibly even use the, yeah, I use the steel rule. So it'll fit underneath and I'll have to um, have to pack it up nice and tight and I'll weld through the, the hole and make a fake spot weld and then I'll, I'll, I'll weld along here and you know so you know that once again it's going to need a bit of banging and battering about but I'm going to try and keep the swage line in and um, that was not rotten so I'm going to try and weld against the swage line and um, we should manage you know but um, We'll get there, we'll definitely get there, but um, I can't really do any more banging tonight because it is getting quite late and I do have neighbours, I'm working in the street. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put some, um, some rust treatment in here. You know, get, um, I've scraped it all out, you know, I've used a piece of steel right in here and scraped it all out. Actually, you can see there's bits coming up. So I'll give it one more scrape. I've got a vacuum cleaner, I'll vacuum it all out. Then I'll get the rust treatment, rust treatment right in you know, rust treat all this, rust treat everything before even thinking about welding it. But, um, you know, it'll, um, it'll be a reasonable job. And this is, the, this is the underside of the bonnet. And it does have the, the, the sound deadening material. It's, you see, it's completely shot. Um, there was another piece in here. Um, you know, it's, it's held down by these. So the sound deadening material, it's, it's held down here. And it does come, you know, it comes right up to here. So, you know, this is, I'm fussing over something that's going to be largely hidden by, you know, sound deadening material. Of course, this is scrap. I'll be buying a new one. 
Um, but I just want it to be right. I don't want any anything to sort of niggle me in the future. If I'd have ignored this, it would have constantly niggled me. So realistically, you know, you can buy a new bonnet for, a, a, I say new, a second-hand panel. You can buy a second-hand panel for a few hundred pounds, maybe two, three hundred pounds, that wouldn't have had the rust and the rot. And, you know, I've spent tens of hours on this, but this is the original panel. It's all original. The car is original. I just want to keep it as original as possible. Minus about, you know, less than 5%. In fact, there's not even five, you know, but, you know, just, you know, a, a, a tiny little bit there, tiny little bit here. The rest of it is all original material. So I just want to, I, I like originality and, um, I, yeah, once again, I wouldn't be able to sort of live with, you know, not repairing a bonnet that I'm able to repair. But, you know, if I were paying somebody else these man hours, it would be a second-hand bonnet in better condition and just spray it and put it on. You know, I wouldn't be able to pay somebody else the man hours I'm putting into this. Wouldn't justify it at all.